Hi, Susan. Yes, Pete Walker, we met earlier. This is my colleague, DS John Wheeler. Sorry, I've not had my lunch today. I know it's late and you've had a long night. Would you mind if we ask you a few more questions? Of course. Come on in. Do you want tea? Oh, yes, please. I'm gasping. So, Susan, you would have been in the swimming pool when the victim entered the changing room. Did you hear anything untoward? A, a struggle? A scream? No, but I would have been swimming at the time. It's difficult to make anything else out when your ears are full of water. Not to worry. The lifeguard didn't hear anything either. The victim was probably caught unaware. Killed from behind. Stabbed multiple times. Clinically. Clean. That's terrible. Why would somebody do such a thing? Look, I know you've already gone over this. But we just need to clarify a few things from your statement. Um, so, anyway, we now have the CCTV footage from the gym, and it confirms what you originally told us, that the victim entered the changing room just after 7pm, 7.02 to be exact, and then you entered two minutes later, shortly under a minute after that, you can be heard shouting for help. Now, this is crucial, Susan. Can you tell us what happened when you entered that changing room? I walked in through the door and went straight to my locker. That's when I heard the scuffle. The scuffle? Presumably the sound of the killer climbing out through the window. Did you investigate the sound of the scuffle? No, I didn't really think anything of it at the time. I just grabbed a towel and went to the back of the changing rooms, which is where the showers are. And that's when I saw her. Lying there. I timed it. A slow walk, it takes about 10 seconds to get to the lockers from the door. Further 5 seconds until you've got a full view of the showers. Now, even if we take into account the sound of the scuffle and you opening and closing the locker, you don't start shouting for help until a further 30 seconds have passed. Well, I was just checking my phone, it was in my locker. Fair enough. These are the kind of details we need, Susan. You know, so we can understand your version of events. My version of events? My suspect? You were found stood over the dead body, covered in blood. I was attempting to resuscitate her. Save her life. You can't honestly believe that I had anything to do with this. The poor girl was covered in stab wounds. How could I have done that and what with? Presumably you've searched the area. Have you found a murder weapon? And if not, how would I have disposed of a knife in such a small space of time? I had absolutely nothing to do with this. I walked into the changing rooms and there she was, dead. Maybe I should get some more tea. Great idea. Hey, have you got any more of these delicious biscuits? Yeah, cupboard next to the fridge. Susan, does the name Kevin Willis mean anything to you? Of course. He's a, uh, he's a personal trainer at the gym. You dated, right? Just the once. It didn't really work out. Not my type. Are you aware that he is, or should I say, was dating the victim? Really? That doesn't surprise me now. He doesn't? He's a personal trainer at a gym. He's dated half the women that go there. We spoke to him earlier. He was very upset as you can imagine, you know, losing a loved one in such tragic circumstances. But he was more disturbed when we mentioned your name as being the person who found the body. He said uh, that you had dated, but he said it was him who called it off. He said he found you intense. Those were his exact words. And afterwards you bombarded him with text messages, phone calls, so he blocked you. And then you started booking one-on-ones with him at the gym, just so you could spend some time with him. And then even after he asked you to leave him alone, you continued to stalk him. You followed him into supermarkets, parked outside his house. He describes you as a deeply sinister and scary person. Again, those were his exact words. You see, when you're attempting to solve a murder, the most important question to ask is not how, but why. Motive. Motive is everything. 
So when Kevin and Jane Bennett started dating, you were incensed. And when they moved in together, you decided quite simply, if you can't have him, nobody can. I might even qualify that with a response. If you want to arrest me, then go ahead. But we all know you have no way of proving that I killed her. Ice knife. Sorry? It's a perfect murder weapon. Well, it would have been if you didn't leave them all in your freezer. Can I uh, help myself to those biscuits? <laughs>